So you've probably heard about traps. In fact, it's safe to say you've probably heard of many things defined by that singular word. Whether it be a music genre, a piece of equipment, or the topic of today's video. A cross-dressing anime boy. Cut it! A trope not dissimilar in the way it's used for the categorization of characters. Compared to other such examples, like tomboy, milf, himbo, or the Japanese term sundere. Just a pull from a wide variety. In fact, if you stick to Japanese, this trope in that region is generally defined by the term otakonoko. While coming back over here, you could also find many referring to these characters as femboys. But regardless of how you refer to them, the problem plaguing these characters remains the same. And that's at least on the western side of things. There are continued attempts to remove these characters or even general discussion about them. Not by the people you would traditionally think would want to remove an effeminate male either. But before we get into the discussion of the mindset behind it, let's actively look at a recent example as it will help us frame the rest of the video. Recently, Seven Seas, a company I've had the displeasure of covering previously, debuted an English release of the manga they dubbed, I Think I Turned My Childhood Friend Into a Girl. For those in the know, you'll already see a red flag in the name alone, but for everyone else, to explain, in Japanese, this title is called Koisoru Quotation Mark Otome and quotation mark no sukuri kata, and was known as how to make a quotation mark girl and quotation mark fall in love, which would be an accurate translation before Seven Seas took on the series. A small difference to some, but very meaningful, as all of the changes done to the work follow the same pattern that's observed here. So let's take another example from the first volume, where an accurate translation of the text in this panel would read as. As soon as I was transformed into looking like a girl. However, the localizer presented it as such, ever since I came out as a girl. Later on, the titular character of the series has this said to them. If you're going to look like a girl, then be more aware of it. The localizer once again wrote, if you're going to be a girl, try acting like one in its place, and so on. There's so many countless examples of this, and if you do want more, I've left a link to the Thylene Scans article in the description. That goes over many of the problems with the first volume of the official release. But I think you understand what's going on here. Any opportunity that presents itself, the localizer rewrites the text to push that this effeminate male is transgender, in a way that directly contradicts the original author's work. I've made mention many times across my videos that localizers are commonly leeches. They do not care about the integrity of the author's vision, frequently changing it to suit their own. And while this case is the perfect example of that, surely there are people I can already hear trying to pass this as some sort of honest mistake. But no, the localizer and her friend group consisting of some faces we've known in the past <laughs> have publicly stated when localizing this series, they talk to trans people on the best way to localize the character thus went out of their way to change him into a trans woman, with the editor for this series later regurgitating a very similar mindset and story. These people will ask random individuals that have nothing to do with the work how to translate it before talking to the authors. Let's make that clear. There's no doubt this option was open for reasons we will soon get into, but even if it wasn't, the author's views are very apparent. In interviews, She's gone on record several times, speaking of how this is a boys love manga. She refers to the character as male. The text itself, the character himself, states he's a male. It's even more absurd when you consider the big reason for him cross-dressing is for the other male lead. But if that somehow wasn't enough for you to believe she would be bothered by this, well, as the situation developed, the author, as well as the original publication, tweeted out for any English speakers who were taking issue with the latest release to file a complaint directly to that original publicist. Of course, after things got to this point, Seven Seas responded to the community, saying they will reevaluate the first volume. That's where the story for most people ended. As with everything in the news cycle, it gets swept away by something else almost instantly. But I'd like us to take a deeper look, as this is just the tip of the iceberg for both a greater problem plaguing this industry 
and its communities, as well as 7C's specific, sneaky practices that are not fully going notice. First, let's look at how 7C's categorizes their manga. As stated, this release was self-described boys love, or yaoi. 7C's does have a boys love section. However, what you'll notice upon further examination is, for the most part, cross-dressing manga, like the one we're discussing, are not put into this category. Instead, they're placed into LGBT, which is kind of a performative gesture to begin with. If a gay man is looking for content that interests him, boys love or yaoi is a much better option, as instead of placing numerous vastly different things into one category, it's specific. That's the point of tags. Same goes for lesbians. They would be much better off with Girls Love or Yuri. So ultimately, it's not only redundant, but seems to also exist as a disingenuous way to wrongfully categorize these cross-dressing or boys' love works as transgender. I will once again refer to the direct words of the editor, where they mocked users for saying the boys' love story was ruined because they implied the MC was trans. A complete admittance that they don't see it as an issue, that they're removing these characters' identities, and how purposeful it is. Obviously, it should be stated there are stories pertaining to transgender characters in existence, and that is not an issue. But the stories we're talking about here are not. What is happening here is disgusting. And even if these changes are reversed, this is just the latest example of those deceitful practices that only get backtracked when bilinguals, or those who frequent this content beforehand, happen to take notice. Furthermore, now that it's clear these mindsets as well as the individuals that harbor them are affecting the industry, tampering with people's work to the dismay of the creators. Let's talk more about said mindsets. As with this framing, no one can simply hand wave the idea that these beliefs being pushed are harmless and not actually ill-intentioned. Keep in mind, this isn't specifically about seven C's, despite using them as our example up till now. It can be observed in all areas of the localization industry all stemming from a common-held opinion among online, self-described, progressive circles, that they are fixing these characters and their arcs, when they campaign for these characters to actually be transgender or some other form of identity, saying that those that push back are just doing so because of bigotry. Counter to this, I will posit that these individuals are actually xenophobic. They're essentially claiming the Japanese are too backwards or dumb to understand they wrote trans characters. Look no further than Atlas to see how prevalent this mindset is, a company that is constantly called transphobic as well as homophobic for completely false narratives. The most notable example being of Persona 4, one you've no doubt heard of before, where near every week, there's people online arguing that Nato is a trans man. This is particularly offensive because like many of these cases, it ignores the character's actual story. Her tale is one of sexism. It's a commentary on traditional Japanese views of women. How within her profession, she wants to be seen as an equal to her male peers. She doesn't want her gender to be used against her in a similar way to her age. This is just a brief description, of course, but this is actually interesting commentary. And so is the prospect of seeing how a character learns to deal with this or overcome said hardships embracing who they are. As such, it stands as a timeless example of the level of ignorance those that try to speak on these characters have, while trying to claim it's the other side that's wrong. But if you want to get to a more recent example, as well as getting us back to traps, look to the Catherine remake, a perfect illustration of this mentality, as at the very announcement of a feminine character using the male symbols in his imagery, there were calls of them being a trans woman. What? No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. An entire controversy was formed that Atlas was transphobic, that the fans were transphobic, and that the character Vincent was transphobic. It was all manufactured. And nowadays, you will still see people claiming this character to be trans, despite that when the game came out, it was confirmed this character was indeed a male. And while I have my reservations to how he's integrated into the core story, this character was anything but phobic. His route sees Vincent wrestling with confusing feelings, that he could be seeing a male a certain way, and eventually embracing them if the player chooses to. 
the two becoming cool space boyfriends. Furthermore, Catherine does contain a trans character in Erica, yet these people seem to hate her on the basis that the game's friend group goofs on her and treats Erica just as they treat each other. They see her as an equal and that's apparently bad. Point being though, transgender isn't some magical concept that the Japanese don't understand. And if anyone's bigoted here, it's these accusers. In fact, Catherine, Rin specifically, shows us something else. It's clearly not always ignorance. Some of these individuals that push this mindset that these characters are not the identity the author states have a far more malicious goal. Again, Atlas is constantly to this day, whether it's the company itself or employees, harassed and slandered, simply because these individuals made up a narrative in their head and then said that narrative wasn't good enough. X is a bad representative of Y, and they refuse to accept that this is largely because X isn't Y. I mean, really, how many times have you seen articles stating Atlas in some form needs to do better? Focus on that statement for a second. It's about doing everything possible to push and manipulate their way to getting these companies to do better by them, change things to how they want, not accurately represent what the creators or developers intended. Lastly, there's one final point I want to touch on here to do with this mindset. It's the idea of point scoring. And for this, we're going to be using the essential poster boy for the trap trope, a stofo of the Fate series. Chances are, even if you're a person who has never given a shit about anime and you somehow made your way to this part of the video, you know about this cursed little bean. You might have also encountered those that try to speak on him actually being transgender or non-binary. However, when you look at the source material put forward, you'll find a very different picture, as with every other case we've discussed. In fact, what people often point to as proof of this character being trans is directly related to the core of why this trope is called the trap. Estofo throughout media will be referred to as male, whether it's him saying he's his own man Fate Stella, always using masculine language when referring to himself, or the fact that he's on the boys' banners whenever they're gendered in Fate Go as well as so many more examples. It feels weird pulling up any instances at all, because it's just the norm if you interact with this series and see him show up in a production. Although, if you cherry pick, there are times when Estofo plays coy, such as his gender being marked as a secret in his Fate Apocrypha Volume 3 profile, due to him drawing over the original answer with a cutesy little image, or when he's ambiguous about said gender, upon early interactions with the player in Fate Go. But that's part of the trope. Traps are supposed to, at least initially, trick you into thinking they're a girl, for you, the viewer, to go, Whoa, what? It's a trick. A trap. Get it? Not complicated. Using these instances, and ignoring all the other millions of times, this character and many others say their gender directly is not proof. Essentially, if you have to cherry pick to make a point, you probably never had one to begin with. But I'm explaining all of this in the hoops one would have to jump through to make this point because Fate as a series has trans or non-binary characters, ones that are still traditionally attractive with interesting stories. They are just as much of a character as Estofo is. However, characters like Chevalier Dion are never brought up in discussion because it's not actually about the representation itself. As much as those that argue endlessly about these characters try to state it is. Popularity getting the biggest name so you can rub it in a perceived opponent's face is actually the core factor. They don't care about the character, the stories, the actual representation of an identity being portrayed. Astofo is the more popular character, thus he is worth more points. Thus, they have to claim him as opposed to all the other characters that are more than suitable representatives. Understanding that, well, leads us to the through line for this video. Control. That's what every minor point comes back to. This is no more evident than in our final stop on today's topic, and that's the word trap in and it of itself. If you're in these communities we've been discussing, you no doubt have taken notice to the fact that it's not just these characters being removed, but also the constant gaslighting done in order to paint a negative stigma around the word's use. Whether it be in the corners of the internet like any memes calling it transphobic, or just your average Twitter user which is quite the ridiculous notion, isn't it? Though perhaps the best way to illustrate this is with the fact that the briefly mentioned word femboy 
after a rising in popularity to replace Trap, suffered the exact same fate. I've stated before if you give any leeway to this, the idea that Trap is de facto bad. It'll just become about something else. Next, Crossdresser will be phobic, or maybe femboy. And as said, that's exactly what is happening. The people who once campaigned for that exact replacement just moved to the next word after they largely got what they wanted. In both cases, the idea put forward is that these words can be used incorrectly, but that's the same and true of any gendered language. The word man or woman can be just as offensive if used in the same way. I mean, you're not going to tell me you've never seen a piece of media where a normal guy is referred to by a female word in an attempt of ridicule. So while I could further defend both of these terms, explaining how trap was invented on 4chan as a replacement for the term to drop a Bridget, when trolling other users with anime boys that didn't necessarily look like boys, later only having any self-inflicted connection to real people by the nature of them calling themselves it, in the same way the cringe girl you knew in high school called herself a sundere, whether that word actually fit their descriptor or not. Alternatively, I could easily go back to explaining other characters, like how Chihiro of the Danganronpa series fits into the same camp as Nato, with any trans statements falling completely in opposition to the character's actual arc. Maybe I could go further into characters like Felix from ReZero, how trans statements are cherry-picked, similar to Estovo, ignoring both the actual context or further comments from the author. But there's no point. And that was a failing I've made in the past, because the people trying to tell you these things don't actually care about the logistics. And I think what I've said here is more than enough for a person genuinely wading in on this topic to come to the correct conclusion and see the reoccurring themes. For all the others, it's literally just another thing to take control of, and the only response you should have to this is to mock that type of person and move on. It goes without saying that there are a lot of dudes who don't conform to typical gender roles, as in aren't physically masculine, both existing in fiction and reality. As such, those in reality can find something relatable in these characters. Forcing a narrative that feminine dudes can't just, well, be that for a variety of reasons, or not allowing a trope in fiction to define that, is completely backwards. You know, I often see people make an assumption that I care about this because I fall into that camp, as many see me as a feminine guy. And yes, it has given me that extra perspective, having to deal with this personally, especially when young. However, that's not why I care about this topic. I don't even relate to the vast majority of these characters, because they frequently focus on that femininity, when I find such traits irrelevant to identity. Sure, there are exceptions, but it comes with me liking those characters on their own, like Leophotia. So, the reason then, that I'm so outspoken here, is for the same reason I speak of localization in videos, in tweets why I'm learning Japanese, why I get riled up about censorship. It's about the integrity of the original author's work and freedom of expression. There are people behind these pages that want to tell their stories, and I'll be damned if I ever let some loser who grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth and not an ounce of creativity to their name try to take these stories, these characters, and twist them into their own. Whether I'm into that content itself or not, and that's an important distinction. Going back to the start with how to make a girl fall in love, we got those changes because people spoke up and actually did something. Control is the thing that ties everything in this video together, whether it's the stories, those words, everything on this topic. But you don't need to willingly hand that control over. Don't let others step over you and name call you in a submission when you know what's right here. Don't let people ever make you think that these things are unimportant if you care about them. And perhaps, most importantly for this video, just let dudes be dudes. Well, that's the end of that one. As always, if you enjoyed my videos, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, or if you feel so inclined to want to support me more directly, you can find links down below to my Patreon as well as my stream channel and Twitter. But otherwise, an extra thank you to all those appearing on screen right now for the continued support.